everyone. So now we're ready to start the next block on our Under the Sea Mystery Cal for the year 2020. This is the left bottom four block where you have, we finished the crab, which was block one. Now we're on block two, which is the seahorse. So here you should see all of the colors for your graph. Now just because I have certain colors here doesn't mean that you have to keep it that way. So if you want to change colors, you can. But this is my color scheme for my seahorse, and I'm going to be using a light purple for the main color of the seahorse, and then a darker purple for the outline of the seahorse. And then I have a little pink color here on the edge of the seahorse, just for some decoration. Then you can see all the colors that I have here. So the first thing that you're going to do is just gather all of the colors that you're going to be using for your seahorse block. I already have all of my colors on my clothespin, so I really love this method. I think it works really great, so um, I've been happy using these different clothespins for my colors. So for mine, I like to, at nighttime, I like to Tunisian crochet in front of the television, and I found that Instead of just letting these just fall all over my lap, which was a nightmare, I decided to take a length of cardboard and fold it in half. And then what you can do is you can take and clip these clips to the cardboard, and then you can unwind from the back, which works great. I just love it. So that's what I do for mine. And then for my excess clothing pin clips, I clip them to my storage bag. And the reason why I did this instead of sticking them inside is because at night when I'm watching television, I can't find the color that I need and I don't know what colors that I have already on the clothes pins. So this is much easier. I can just grab the color that I need. And so this works great if you wanted to try this method too. And then I have some extra clothespins if I need to run and get some more of a certain color. So now I'm going to go ahead and get you started on the seahorse block. So the first thing that you're going to do is look at the first row. So I made it easy for the first row. Now when I make the next four blocks, I'm going to add some more techniques. So I'm going to show you having the colors on the first row. So if you have colors on the first row or you want colors on the first row, I'll show you how to do that when we get to the next four blocks. But for this, these four blocks for beginners, I made it really simple. So we have all the same color for our first row. So we need a chain of 40 with the brown colored yarn. I like this method so much that I'm just going to leave my brown <laughs> clipped to my board and then unwind from the back of the clothespin. I just love it, so it works great. Now you just unwind a little bit of the yarn and we're going to be making a chain with the brown colored yarn and I need a chain of 40. So you just take your yarn, go ahead and fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your Tunisian crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. And then you have the loop around your crochet hook. Then you're going to make a chain of 40. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 40, and then come back. So now I finished a chain of 40, and that chain of 40 is just the starting chain. So we haven't even started row one yet. So now we're gonna start half of row one, so for the first half of row one, we know that all of the blocks are brown. So we need 40 loops. Remember, each loop on your hook corresponds with one block on your graph. 
So I have one loop on my hook. Then I'm going to go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, and now I have two loops on the hook. And you're just going to go into each stitch and bring up a loop until you reach the end. And when you reach the end, you should have 40 loops on your hook. And then come back. So now I finished my last loop. I have 40 loops on my crochet hook. So it's easy because there's no color changes. So I'm just going to count with you on the way back. So remember that for the first loop, you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through only one loop for the first one only. That's how you always start on your way back. Now remember, we just finished the first half of row one. So now we're going to go back towards where we started to complete row one. So now I have one stitch. This is how I count. After I go through one loop, that counts as one. So I'm going to yarn over and go through two loops for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Always happy to end with 40. That means that I did everything correctly and I finished the first row. So now you see on your graph we finished the first row all brown as is our finished work. So row one is complete. Now we're ready to move up to row two. So we look at row two on the graph and I've gotten, it makes it much easier to take and put a little check on your printed, the graph that you printed up to show that you finished row one. And I even write the number two if you don't have number two on your graph. I wrote two one so I know that I'm on row two now. And each time I finish a row I just put a little check so I know where I'm coming back to which row that I'm working on. So I'm on row two. Row two has four brown colored. So I need four loops of the brown color. So the first block on the graph is always the loop that's on your crochet hook. So I have one. Go into the next stitch. Bring up a loop for two. three, four. So I have four of the brown. Now I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the green. So I'm going to bring in my green color now. So I have green on my clothespin already. I'm just going to attach it right next to my brown. And I can just unravel it. Whoever came up with these clothespin, this clothespin idea, thank you very much. I really love that method. So then, you're ready to bring in the green color. 
So you just take your hook, go into the next stitch, drop the brown, and then bring up the green color loop, and then tie a knot. And again, you need seven of the green. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now I finished the seven of the green. Now I need the blue. I need 10 of the blue color. So I'm going to bring my blue color in. Go into the next stitch. Bring up a loop with my blue color. Tie a knot. And again, I need 10 of the blue color. So, so far I have one, So now I have 10 of the blue color, and then we'll look at the graph again. So now I need 3 of the yellow, and then 5 of the brown. I had um, someone come on to the YouTube and just tell me that they thought it was too many colors. <laughs> and then I was thinking, oh, I just love all the colors because it just makes it that more unique. And it's not that hard. Once you get the hang of it, as you can see, it's actually not that hard. So there's one, two, three, now, for the brown, as you can see, the brown is too far for me to stretch it across, so I'm going to need a new brown on a clothespin. And it looks like I already have one. That's why I love having all of these hooked to my storage container, because then I can see what I have, so I'm not making another brown clothespin when I already have one. So now I need five of the brown. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and then bring up a loop with my brown and then I need five of the brown Look how much more organized this is. I just love it. All right, so now I have five of the brown. Then I need three green. So the green is too far. I'm not going to stretch it that far. So I'm going to grab my green. I have some green on another clothespin. I'm going to grab that now. So now I need three with the green. The other thing that's nice about this is when you reach the end and something doesn't add up, you're not ending with the right number of colors or whatever, 
then you know that you have to recheck everything, make sure you counted right. So there's one, two, three, then I need two of the red. So I'm going to bring in my red. There's one. and two. So then the rest of the row is blue. So six left with the blue. So now I have my blue and I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So it ended up correctly for the last six blocks with the blue. So that's reassuring when that happens. So now I'm going to have all beginners again. You just count all of your loops. So I usually count on the way back just like I did for the first row. But this time, I'm going to be showing color changes, so I'm not going to count on the, on the way back on the second row. So I'm going to count all of my loops before I start to make the color changes on the way back. So I should have 40 loops on the hook. Each loop corresponds with the blo a block on the graph for the second row. So I have 40 loops on my hook, which is what I should have. Now I'm going to go back. So right now I have half of row two completed and now I'm going to go back to where I started and complete row two. So the first thing you're going to do and you don't grip the right side of the hook very hard. You just loosely hold it. You're mainly just turning it with your right hand. You don't want to hurt your right hand. Then you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and you go through one loop for the first one. Then you look at the two loops in the front of the hook. They're both blue, so you yarn over and go through two loops with the blue color. The first two loops are blue, so you still have blue. You yarn over and go through two loops. 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 So now you see that you have a blue loop and a red loop. So you drop your blue loop, blue color, and pick up the red color. And then you yarn over and go through two. Now you have two red, so you still use your red color. You yarn over and go through two. Now I have a red and a green, so I'm going to drop the red and pick up the green. So I'm going to yarn over and go through two. So now I have two greens, so it's still the green color. Yarn over and go through two. Two green, so yarn over and go through two. Now I have a green and a brown color, so I know I need to change colors, drop the green, pick up the brown, I'm just releasing some of my brown from the clothespin, and then I'm going to yarn over and go through two, let me just back out a little bit, yarn over and go through two, I still have two brown, yarn over and go through two, two brown, yarn over and go through two, two brown, yarn over and go through two. Now I have a brown and a yellow, so I know I need to drop the brown, 
and pick up my yellow. So I'm going to yarn over and go through two, two yellow, two yellow. Now I have yellow and blue, so I'm going to drop the yellow, pick up my blue. Let me release a little bit of my blue. Yarn over and then go through two. And it will curl up, so that's normal with Tunisian. It's nothing to worry about. So now I have blue and green. Drop the blue, pick up the green. Just going to release a little bit of the green. Sorry, I think that was a bird. Oh no, I hope they're okay. I'll check on them in a minute. So now I have green and brown, so I'm going to release my brown, pick up my brown color, go through two, 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 and two. So it's that simple. We just completed row two, and now we're going to move up to row three. So I'm going to go ahead and check off my graph. We just completed row two. And now we're moving up to row three. So now you know what to do. Go ahead and finish. Actually, I'll go ahead and work row three. Go ahead and work row three until you get to the purple. Just wanted to show my workstation. Look how organized and how easy. It makes it much easier. I just love it. So the, it was not a bird, so that's good. So the bird did hit the window, but the bird's fine. I don't see any birds out there, so that's good. A good sign. <laughs> so I just wanted to point out, um, I just got the four brown on my hook and then if you have a gap, I just want you to remember that you just gently pull that gap. You don't want to leave that gap there. Then you take and go through the next stitch, and this one's going to be green. And then continue on. And remember, sometimes the green stitch will go at a triangle. Don't miss your stitches. Your stitches your number of green stitches should correspond with the graph so that you know that you're doing it correctly and not missing any stitches. So here is an example. Here I'm up to the blue. You can see that there's a huge gap right there. So I'm going to take my blue yarn and gently just bring the stitches back together. Then I'm going to go into the blue stitch and bring up a loop with a blue stitch for the number of blue that I need, and I need three blue stitches. And then I'm going to be changing to the purple. So I just wanted to show you for my graph. So for my graph, I have a dark purple, and then for the main color of my seahorse, I have a lighter purple, and then I have pink here. So I just want to show you the colors that I'm using. So for my darker purple, I'm using this dark, beautiful dark purple colored yarn. And then for the lighter purple, I'm using this gorgeous sparkly purple, light purple. So you can choose whatever purples you want for yours, but this is what I'm using for mine. And then for the pink, I chose this really beautiful pastel light pink with the metallic glitter that goes through it. So it should be gorgeous when I'm finished. 
So for mine, I try to keep the colors in order. So brown is here, green, blue. So now I want to put purple here. So I can you can scoot your clothespins over and then you can bring in your purple that you're going to be using. So you can see how this cardboard, the length of cardboard works awesome. So now you're just going to bring in your purple color And then you want to tie a knot with the purple color. And then I need six of the purple colored loops with the dark purple. So there's one. Two. Three. Four. Five and six. So now that should get you started for the seahorse. Go ahead and finish working the seahorse graph. And if I have any teaching points that are different, I'll come back and show you. So of course I'm back already. I'm still on row three and I just finished the dark purple. And you only need one blue after the dark purple. So instead of adding another blue, this, is, this blue is really close. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that across the back. And then just use the one blue right here instead of getting another clothespin or another blue starting here. Then I just need to make the four yellow. So I already have the yellow and I have a little bit of a gap there so I'm just going to gently bring the gap closed. See how I did that? And then I'm just going to bring up a loop with the yellow and then continue on with this row. So one teaching show point that I want to show you I'm on my way back on row three. I went ahead and cut my yellow yarn. So I'm actually going back towards where I started. And I ran out of yarn because I cut it. I want to show you. So what are you going to do at this point? You ran out of your yarn and you're still going back. So what you're going to do is you're still going to look at your two colors. I still need yellow. So I'm going to bring the yellow in. Here's my yellow. I'm going to go ahead and yarn over and bring the yellow yarn through two loops, just like I would have if it was still attached. Then you're going to take and tie a knot with the loose yarn end that you were left with that didn't have enough to continue on. After you tie your knot, you have more yellow yarn now. And then you just continue on. So I still have two yellow. So I'm going to yarn over and then go through two and then just continue on. So now I'm dropping the yellow, picking up my blue. Now it's purple. And then you just continue until you're back to where you started. So that's how you change color when you're going back this way. Since you already know how to, to add colors when you're going towards the other direction. The other thing that I want to point out is you never want to forget which direction you're going. So you don't want to forget that you're going this direction or when you're coming back. 
So when I'm finished with my Tunisian crochet until I'm ready to come back to it, I always finish either at the beginning. So here, instead of stretching the blue across, I'm going to go ahead and add another blue and this is still on row three. And the reason why is because we're going to be using a lot of blue for this block anyway because it's for the water. So having three clothespins with blue on it um, would, wouldn't be that bad because you're definitely going to be using it up. So I'm going to go ahead, instead of stretching it across, I'm going to go ahead and just make another blue. So I actually have three blue clothespins going for this row. So I have one here, and then I have one here, and then I have one over here. So now I'm just going to continue adding the different colors that I need for this row. The other thing I want to point out for row three is on the graph you can see that you're going to need blue for this side. So I'm going to keep this blue over here on this side and then this blue I'm going to keep for towards the center area. So here where I need blue, I'm going to use this blue on this side and not this one. I'm going to keep this blue over here. So I'm going to bring this blue over and use that blue for this side. So this is one more thing on row three that I wanted to point out. So on the previous row, you have three of the blue blocks. So here on row two, actually I'm on row four. So one, two, three, four. So I was accidentally calling it row three, but I'm actually on row four. So on row four here, you can see that on the previous row you had three blue. So that means on row four you should have two purple over the two blue from row three. So make sure that you don't miss those stitches. So here are the row, three blue from row three, and then you have the two purple over the two blue. So you can see that I'm using all the length of my cardboard, pretty much. So this measurement is 21 inches, if you like how long mine is. So it measures 21 inches in length. So now I'm on row five and I just wanted to show you something here. So I just added the pink and now I need two purple. So I'm going to go in the blue and bring up a purple. And then I just want to point out, remember that each of the stitches line up directly over the previous row stitches. And sometimes when you gently pull the stitches together, you'll form a little bit of a triangle here with the stitch. So you don't want to miss that stitch. And you can see that stitch by looking at the graph or you can look at the previous rows vertical stitch so you don't miss it. So make sure that you don't miss those stitches so that you're not frogging. Frogging means to undo your crochet work. So make sure that before you finish a row that your all of your graph blocks correspond with the colors on your loops on your hook. So now I'm all the way over on row 5 and I need a blue here. So it's too far for me to stretch and since I have two blues close by here I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot with the loose yarn in that's by it. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim, make a loose yarn end here, and then bring this blue across to where I need it. So now I am on row six. I'm going to go ahead and work row six with you. So on row six, I need four of the browns. So I have one loop on the hook. You want to the next one for the second, third, and fourth. And then I need one green. 
So you can see that there's a gap here with the green, so I need to close that gap. So I just take the green and then just give it a gentle tug to bring it closer and then go into the green stitch bring up a loop with the green then I need a blue stitch so I'm going to go into the blue stitch give the blue a gentle tug and then bring up a loop with the blue then I need two green so I'm going to go into the green stitch for one and two. You can see how all of the stitches are lining up with the previous row. So now I have two green, I need one blue. Then I need one green. Then I need a pink. and a dark purple. So you can see I have a gap there. So I'm going to bring that, close that gap, go into the right stitch, bring up the dark purple. Then I need two of the light purple. And then this is where you don't want to miss a stitch. So you can see that there's a stitch right here. So don't miss that stitch. Sometimes when you have the color changes, like I've shown you before, the stitch will be a little bit hidden. So make sure you don't miss it. And you can always double check the graph too. And what I mean by that is here on 6, you can see that the light purple is over a dark purple and I need two of the light purple before I go to two of the dark purple. So it's corresponding with the graph. So now I need two of the dark purple. Now I need three blue, so I'm going to use this blue right here. So I'm going to put gently and then bring up a loop. So there's one, two, three. Then I need a dark purple. Then I need two of the light purple. Then I need a dark purple. Then I need a blue. Two yellows.
Then I need a blue. And two yellows. Then I need one, two, three, five reds. Now, as far as the green goes, I'm not going to cut it because on the graph, you can see that I want to need the green up here, so I'm just going to drag it up from behind when I need it. So I'll be pulling it up when I need it, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. the rest to be blue. So go ahead, finish the rest in blue, and then come back. So now I have all of the loops on the hook, and I'm going to count and color change on the way back with you. So now I'm going to yarn over and go through one loop for one. Two. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seven, Two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, and forty. 
And so we've completed row 6. So you can see how it curls and that's okay. That's normal for the Tunisian crochet. And now you're ready to continue finishing all of your blocks and that's what you keep doing. Just continue working each row just like that all the way up to the top. So this is what my seahorse looks like. All finished. You can see how it curls at the bottom. That's okay. Don't worry about that. And it will also curl at the top. So you can see the gorgeous design here. And you can also see that I don't have any gaps. So there is a little bit of a gap here but nothing that you won't be able to uh, once you put the backing on there you won't be able to see it so the backing on the back of this so if you do have a little bit of a gap somewhere don't worry about it and sometimes you can actually push to to cover but overall you shouldn't have a lot of gaps on there but if you do have something don't worry about it it's not going to affect your finished work at all. It'll still look really pretty once we put it together. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is that you do have a little bit of, it's not going to be an exact straight, but it's pretty close as far as the edges. So don't worry if it curves slightly. So you'll get used to the tension, how much tension. I only provide enough tension and that means when you pull the work together, the stitches together, to where you prevent any gaps. Now, sometimes you will have a gap, like I showed you, but it's not anything to be too concerned about. And then you're not even really going to be able to tell once the backing is placed, the fleece backing. Also on the back, even though we use the technique with the clothespins, you still may have a lot of loose yarn ends. Just make sure that you have knots. And then you can take and trim also. So just take your scissors and you can take and trim loose yarn ends. You want to leave a little bit of a loose yarn end so your knots don't come undone. But if you need to trim, you can trim them also. And that is my seahorse. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention is when you're really getting into the color changes, you may notice that on the back, you start to have a lot of where it's getting really tangled. So if that happens, you can always release some of your yarn from the clothespin and then just go ahead and cut it. And then you can pull the yarn through the tangled mess and then just finish your Tunisian crochet. So you don't have to leave it attached the whole time. And you're going to have knots anyway, so you don't have to really worry because you'll never see the knots on the right side, and we're going to be covering the loose yarns ends anyway. So now you're ready. Now you can either start on your next block or you can go ahead and crochet the two blocks that we've completed, the crab block and the seahorse block together. So you can see how it's going to turn out. This is the block one and this is block two. And in the next video tutorial, I'll show you how to crochet these two blocks together. Or if you want to wait for all four blocks to crochet them together, you can do that as well. But in the next video tutorial, I'm going to be showing how to crochet the two blocks together.